The Charles Stewart case shook Boston in 1989 when a white man lied to police claiming a black man shot him and his pregnant wife in a carjacking, killing her. This fabrication ignited a firestorm as the city engaged in a racist manhunt for the killer until the truth was finally revealed. That much is well known, but a new podcast from the Boston Globe sheds fresh light on the story, revealing a conspiracy that was bigger than anyone knew. It's called Murder in Boston, the untold story of the Charles and Carol Stewart shooting. And host Adrian Walker joined us for a sneak peek. Adrian, for those who might be unfamiliar with the Charles Stewart case, what happened? This was the night of October 23rd, 1989. Charles and Carol Stewart were a couple from Reading who were at a birthing class at Brigham and Women's Hospital. The shooting occurred nearby in Mission Hill. He claimed that a black First man in a track suit had jumped into the car and shot them. None of it was true, but police tore apart Mission Hill and it ignited, as you said, a huge firestorm for two and a half months. Now, you say tore apart Mission Hill. It also tore apart the city. We have a recording. Uh, let's listen to it. They grabbed him, threw his face to the table. He's struggling, like, what are you doing, da-da-da? Let you know, boom, take him, slam him against the, the side of the wall, bust his face up on the wall. Snatch him up. He's telling my mom to call his mom. They throw the cuffs on him, basically drag him down three flights of stairs. I'm, thank God he didn't break his arm or his wrist because they treat him like trash. Who is that in the recording and what is he talking about? You just heard from Don Juan Moses, who was an 11 year old kid in Mission Hill at the time. He was listening to his cousin get taken into custody by the Boston Police Department. His cousin had done nothing. But this is one of the indelible traumatic memories for Don Juan and for many people who lived through this experience. Now, you say many people who lived through this experience, this is personal to you. What were you doing in 1989? Well, in 1989, I was a new reporter at the Boston Globe. I'd been in Boston for uh, five months, and I covered the story. And uh, it was quite an introduction to the city. What do you remember from that time, being in the city and being a young reporter of color, having to report on it? Oh, my gosh. You know, I've always said, you know, this was a crucible. It was a real introduction to the way race functioned in the city. It was a scary time. It was a violent time. And uh, it's, it's an indelible memory for so many of us, which is one of the reasons I wanted to spend two years revisiting it. What new information does the podcast uncover? There's a lot of new information in the podcast, but the shocking thing to me was how many people were aware that Stuart pulled the trigger. We have identified 33 people who knew he had done it and did nothing with the information before the time he went off the Tobin Bridge on January 4th, 1990. Is it fair to say it was a conspiracy? I think it's fair to say it was a conspiracy, yes. I think there was a conspiracy of silence, particularly among his friends in Revere. And I think the police also dropped the ball because they came to their conclusion right away that it must have been this black assailant. And they failed to follow so many leads that could have spared the city a great deal of pain. What do you hope new comes from the podcast? Well, first of all, a lot of people don't even remember that this story happened because it was 34 years ago, and half of the people who lived here weren't here at the time. So uh, we want to resurrect the history, but also it's got a long legacy that lives on and a legacy of police misconduct and other things that we really need to reexamine as a city. This legacy that you say lives on, do you see it manifesting in current day Boston? I do see it in certain ways manifesting in current day Boston, and especially in terms of the way the community and, po and the police interact with each other, which I think has never recovered. I think uh, it has had lasting repercussions in terms of law enforcement, but it's also just had lasting repercussions in terms of race. You know, this is a city where race is always, race and racism are subjects that are always bubbling just beneath the surface. And this is an examination of how that came to be. This podcast series is a tremendous undertaking. Who all was involved? Yes, yeah, so we put together a great team. Brendan McCarthy, our, our investigations editor, ran it, and it included Evan Allen, Elizabeth Coe, and Andrew Ryan. And they all did a spectacular job. Where can people go to listen to this podcast series? Well, you know, it's, a compa it's the companion to an HBO documentary, so you can listen on Max or wherever you get your podcasts. Adrian Walker. Boston Globe columnist and host of a Murder in Boston podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. For Boston Globe Today interviews delivered straight to your inbox, be sure to sign up for our newsletter at bostonglobe.com slash BGT.